So there's a, a bunch of different ways that you can do it, um, and especially that all of those ways do not entail the federal government. Um, so right now, Americans for Prosperity, we're working on some true education reform at the state level because there are some ways that you can do it statewide and some ways that have to be done statewide uh, that can't actually be done at the local level. So trying to give parents and students more of an opportunity to learn in a way that best suits their needs. I mean, there are great public schools. There's no question about that. Um, unfortunately, most of those public schools are located in areas uh, that are very affluent. It's determined by your zip code. You can't, if, if you live on a poorer side of town and you want to get a better life for yourself, you want to go to a school that, that produces higher test scores on the other side of town, you can't do that at the local level right now. Um, you have to go to the school that's assigned to your district, and you have to just be happy and shut up if you don't like the education that, that's being handed down to you. So what we need to do is, is really encourage more competition, because right now the government has as essentially a monopoly on, on, on education. Um, so what, what we could do is look at setting up some sort of education savings account where the money actually follows the kid. We call it backpack funding. So what happens is in Missoula, it's about $13,000 a year. The, the public school system gets paid by the taxpayers to educate a student per year. And compare that with a private school in Missoula, which produces far more econ uh, economic um, opportunity for those students, a lot more educational opportunity, higher test scores. That's about $6,000 a year. So it's half as much, but twice the educational value. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is you can put that $13,000 a year, maybe $12,000, $11,000 of it, because unfortunately these schools have taken out a bunch of debt. And you have to always have enough in there to service the debt uh, to make sure that the investors get paid their money back. But at the end of the day, you can put that money in an education savings account, and then they can use, the parents get to decide with their child what is the best education for them. If it's a public school, if it's home school, if it's charter school, if it's virtual school, they get to choose, and ultimately that'll make all education better. Because everybody says, oh, Jesse, that's going to defund public education. It actually won't. It will... It doesn't have to, I should say that. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to. The schools have the opportunity to improve their education, improve their curriculum, uh, to keep students in, just like businesses competing with one, e one another. There's no reason that um, somebody has to go to Walmart versus Target. Um, so those guys are always competing with better products, different prices, and able to keep themselves both afloat by making things better and cheaper. Yeah, it's about incentives. Like, who, exactly. who's your customer? Is your customer the union boss? Or is your customer um, the child and the parents, and and you will you be ba judged based on their performance? Do they actually like the service you're providing? Uh, I know that's crazy talk <laughs> in our system. So well, one of the things that's that's frustrating that in on the one sense that the last two years, I think a lot of parents woke up to what's going on in in I, I call it government education. It's you know it's it, it's not a public system in the sense that that people are choosing to be there. It's a government system, and you, you typically, most parents don't have a choice at all. Um, but there's still this kind of haves and have nots. I think, I think parents who could afford to, and were watching the virtual schooling and looking at curriculums, and, and just more broadly realizing that sending my child to this, this regimented system is, is not what I signed up for. 